Oh, hi. Give him a run that I can't do. But hi, I'm Jesse. Sometimes laces, sometimes other names, but mostly I'm the head bitch. Uh, welcome to my super weirdo series where we celebrate those who have defied expectations, broken the rules, and built a life and a career all their own. Today's guest is Sterling Taylor. Ugh, dude, he is a modern renaissance man from Texas, New York, Paris, Milan, everywhere you can think of to LA. <laughs> this dude has done it all. He's been a big deal model. You might have seen him as like the Abercrombie model back in the day. I remember those days. I used to go to Mammoth Mall and I guess I would see Mr. Sterling's face everywhere or mostly body. Um, he's also modeled for Ralph Lauren, um, Louis, Louis Vuitton, I mean in other names I can't pronounce clearly and probably uh, butchered the ones that I just said. <laughs> He's also been a music photographer, an art director, a climbing guide, an expedition leader, a lab assistant, um, and even an aspiring landscape designer. Yeah, I know. It's kind of annoying when someone is that talented, adaptable, resilient, and good looking. Seems a little rude, but I'm here to celebrate him today. So here we are. I say we party. What do you think? Let's go with my little uh, <laughs> tag underneath my Chardonnay. Killing it today. Let's bring him on. Sterling! Uh, hi, how are you? Doing pretty good, how are you? You know, I have never been better. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, you know, oh, falling apart just like anybody else is uh, these days. But um, welcome to the Super Weirdo family and thank you for being here. Of course, it's my pleasure. <laughs> you know, to me, you are a builder, you're an innovator. And when you didn't like the box that was assigned to you, you threw it out and forged your own path. Where does your strength come from and your inspiration come from? Uh, it comes from either nature or my fiance. Uh, well, yeah. anyone who's watching, uh, his fiance is amazing. She has the same name as me, Jesse, and the same birthday. So we love her. <laughs> <laughs> what is it about nature? Because like that does not inspire me. So I'm so curious. Tell me more. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, um, living in a place like LA, you know, it's a, a very nature oriented place for the most part, even though if you look through all the yards, you're driving down the street, mm -hmm. you're, you can find yourself getting lost in it. You know, it could be its own little adventure if you want, just walking down the road and looking at an orange tree. Um, but just in general, I just find nature inspiring because it's it's just very humbling. You know, it's it has its stages of life and death, and um, and it's constantly teaching. And I know that kind of sounds maybe cliche or uh, or a little cheesy, but you know, every time I'm outside working in the backyard or on a hike, uh, or you know, back in the in the past when I did mountain rescue, um, I just always would find myself in new scenarios and I feel like nature was always trying to like tell me the way the things that were happening it could be a weird sunset or some kind of crazy ice fall on a mountain or something there was always some kind of inference to what was what was happening in my life at that moment wow I can't relate to that at all but I love that for you um quick question can you hear my husband in the background I can't hear Ryan no but <laughs> <laughs> All right, good. So it will just quietly annoy me while we do this. It's perfect. Um, <laughs> Is he recording? Uh, he's he's just talking on the phone loudly. We can okay. hear you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay, getting back into it. Was uh, was there a pivotal moment, an epiphany, a singular moment that changed the trajectory of your journey? Like, when did you go from weirdo to super weirdo though i think that you've always been a super weirdo yeah i don't know i mean it's i'm just i'm a man of like many changes i've always i feel like every year i'm just, i get super bored uh of being the super weirdo in that chapter and i just <laughs> i just will wake up one day and just turn the page i, I don't know i just it start my my dad is a super weirdo my mom's a super weirdo in her own right and <laughs> um and he's he's similar to me he's just constantly doing something different um like the other day we talked and he was 
he wanted to be a garbage man so he could get back in shape and he's like 85 years old so that was like his goal that's yeah. <laughs> yeah so he uh yeah i would just say it's it's kind of scattered but it's constant that's so amazing. Um, I love that you come from a family of weirdos. I mean, your mom was a chemist, right? And and a school teacher, or she still is. Um, mm -hmm. And your dad was like a cowboy and a model. Yeah, my dad was a cowboy and a model. Um, he <laughs> was one of the Marvel men. Uh, and he was in some of the Lacoste campaigns back in the day with like the Corvettes oh. and the and the and the the lady friend on the hood of the car taking photos and you know, things like that in the '60s and. Uh, my mom was a brilliant chemist uh, who loves riding horses. Um, they actually met met in high school and then were kind of off and on for a while. Yeah. Oh, high school sweethearts. We love yep. to see it. Um, wow. I just, when I was reading your biography that you sent me, uh, I was just like, I knew a lot of it and I didn't know a lot of it. Like you just have done so many different things. Um, what have been some of the setbacks and challenges that you face throughout your very, very layered career? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I guess it depends on my career. Uh... <laughs> I mean, we, we can go through them. I mean, modeling um, to kind of what you're doing now, you're doing a lot of like lab assistance and like that's uh, quite the departure. Yeah, I mean, with modeling, uh, it's got a lot of rejection, you know? Yeah. And it doesn't matter who you are, how handsome or beautiful or this or that, with whoever the model that's hired, they're just looking for a certain certain style or need to get rejected all the time. So that kind of makes it tough, but it also can kind of strengthen you if you're a super weirdo. And because uh, you just see opportunity in that to be like, oh, okay, well then I don't need them or, you know, perhaps I can just learn from this and make myself better if there's something that I could work on. And that's, I know it's kind of like a, superficial things it's a uh, you're in front of a camera based on certain things but you know it's maybe just go run some more go climb some more do something and it kind of is a gentle reminder to stay physically healthy right right that's an amazing um outlook and very positive outlook on <laughs> rejection uh some of us just cry underneath our desks all day but it's fine <laughs> um but you know i think it goes into the idea that if it's not meant for you that's okay um, and you've been very resilient, very adaptable. And so, and everything you've done, you've succeeded at. Is that just, and I, I haven't even asked this question to anyone. It's just, it's, I'm pulling an audible. Um, mm -hmm. That you, you just are successful at each thing that you do. H how, 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 how? <laughs> I like to attribute that to like, just me being a total naive, uh, it's just, I just don't know anything going into these things. And I, I cherish that. I mean, I, I love walking into the room and just being like, I did not know anything about what's going to happen in front of me or, yeah. or what to do here. Like whenever I took on this job as working in a molecular lab for COVID and uh, one of the main labs in the U S and you, I know I'll walk in there and everyone has these fancy degrees and I just don't have a, a degree in any of this. And, uh, and everyone was kind of just rolling their eyes like what is this guy doing here and uh but after a month or so you know I fit right in and um I was uh you know saving the world I guess and um doing what I could I don't know it's I just I just walk into things as a total moron basically <laughs> I think that's a good thing though because that means you're open to learning and learning means growth and I think a lot of people are afraid not to be an expert at what they're doing and um I don't know. I like being, I don't want to be the smartest person in the room. I like being surrounded by people that um, challenge me. Uh, I don't have a degree in music uh, and I'm an executive. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like I think, I think that we all just kind of find what's meant for us. And um, I know you're on like a, what, a three to five year plan or maybe even shorter of just changing your life uh, and doing something new. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. I went from uh, putting billboards in on the side of the road when I was 15 to modeling when I got scouted randomly in the streets to um, working in mountain rescue and being a pro rock climber to now working in a COVID molecular lab. And and next, I'm just obsessed with gardening and, and uh, so I'm working with doing medicine and then also landscaping and learning like plant biology and 
apply to remedi remediation and all sorts of things for um, for just learning. I don't know, learning how plants work. <laughs> you are making us all look really bad. Um, how do you or will you encourage other super weirdos to, you know, find their voice, show up authentically, uh, take up space and break the rules? Well, I, I personally just never believe in the term self-made. I feel like it comes down to community. And uh, just like plants, plants, uh, they communicate. They have their, these channels underground and they communicate if one plant is starting to become dehydrated because um, there's a drought going on or something, other plants are out, it'll be able to connect with other plants and these plants will work uh, together and it'll feed nutrients toward, towards that plant. And I kind of feel like, you know, going back to how nature always gives, gives me answers and has taught me the way, um, I feel like with community, it's, it's very much the same way. And building a strong community and, be, and showing up and doing the best you can for the people around you and it's all, never going to be perfect, but you're built, you're cultivating this excellent environment for everyone to be involved and everyone to be stoked together and for their just for everyone just to grow together to the top, you know, um, no one gets, you, get, you can get to the top alone, you know, um, but like, again, you probably didn't get there alone, but you just maybe didn't cultivate those relationships or, or attend to them, you know, um, and I think that's very important. I think that's super important, you know, um, not to sidetrack too much, but I've been uh, exploring the Web3 space accidentally because of my job, um, my day job uh, as head of sync at Venice. And um, the word community is like constantly talked about. And I think that that's just a human condition thing. So everyone's going to flock to where they can find uh, their squad, uh, their community. Um, I still haven't found mine, but I'm um, if you're out there. Slide into my DMs. Um, okay, I have a really important part of this uh, series and it's called Superhero or Super Weirdo. It's a fire round. There are no wrong answers. I mean, of course there are wrong answers in my book, but I'm not gonna judge you for what you come up with. So just know that I have your back. This is a safe space for you. Um, okay. If you don't know the person, you can pass, you can say something else or you can make it up. Again, there are no rules. Um, are you ready? All right. I, I hope I am. I think Are I am. Sure? Are you sure? Have you checked in? Are we, are, are we really ready? <laughs> All right. Let's see this. Okay. Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Superhero. Anthony Bourdain. Super weirdo. Lisa Rinna. Don't know who that is. <laughs> <laughs> the housewife. Uh, Kanye West. Hmm. <laughs> he's somewhere in between he's the, he's the nuanced version of both of those things whenever wherever they bridge uh i call him a narcissist okay batman yeah. well if i if i can use <laughs> other things and yeah but if i had to choose between the two it's a hard one <laughs> uh batman the batman maybe the most recent batman uh super weirdo yeah i agree the fab five uh who are the fab five <laughs> <laughs> like Queer Eye for the Straight Guy. Remember them? And then they did a reboot for Netflix. John That's a tough one. All so I feel like they're kind of, they're superheroes in a sense. They've inspired a lot of people and they've brought it, it immersed the whole culture in. So I would say superhero. Superhero. I back it. Okay. Anna Delvey. I don't know if you know who that is. I don't. All right. Pass. We're going to, I'm going to send you a little Netflix link later. Uh, <laughs> Chelsea Handler. Super weirdo. Quest Love. Super weirdo. Barbie. <laughs> Probably super weirdo. I mean, they, they both, I mean, super weirdo to me is still pretty awesome. So hopefully I'm answering this right. There, uh, there are no wrong answers. Yeah. Okay, okay. Because they both set, or can be pretty awesome in my book. Um, but uh, yeah, probably super weirdo. It's, a, it's just so weird, those things. <laughs> right? Um, it's interesting. Everyone has said the same thing about Barbie. Everyone yeah. thinks she's a super weirdo. No one has <laughs> called her a superhero. Everyone else has had a different answer for most people. Nice. Um, that was amazing. Uh, there you have it. Thank you so much for being here. You're a boss. You're a legend. You just keep saving the world. I will keep riding on your coattails. I'll just like show up, say, let's go, Sterling. You climb that mountain. I will be on the ground floor. And uh, <laughs> I love it. I love it. And to those watching, this is your daily reminder to be yourself 
and keep it weird. You know what I'm saying? All right. So thank you so much, Sterling. I so appreciate you. Thank you. Head bitch out.